just to relieve the trauma, frustration and boredom of this miserable but essential lockdown, I humbly offer another thought for the day. Proceeded with some weak rubbish humour, which I hope may in some small way lead to a few seconds of worry-free relaxation. However much you shop around, when you finally make your purchase, you will always find it somewhere else cheaper. And whenever you apply to get a loan, you first have to prove that you don't need it. I find that one of the most endearing of personal characteristics is humility. Not, I hasten to add, to be confused with obsequiousness, nor to the detriment of legal authority or law and order. The quality and ready, easy ability to put others at ease and relieve any inhibition or anxiety that they may have by your own modest demeanour is to my mind an essential aspect of a Christian. An imperialistic, aloof or overbearing manner is unkind and even hurtful to the less confident or self-assured. Humility and empathy, giving equal respect to all, is a social Christian requisite. But of course, a caveat is until or if it is abused. In such a case, one should always, as in everything else, treat the circumstances of the moment with good sense, as Jesus did with the moneylenders in the temple. Which leads me to think of generosity, not generosity of the material kind. We're only too familiar with that. As we are quite aware, some give readily, and some might be described as backward in coming forward. I call to mind the Latin proverb, bis dat quicito dat. He gives twice, who gives promptly. It is the generosity of spirit that remains most strongly in my memory. And I apologise for taking you back to sea again. In destroyers, in wartime, watches are always of four hours duration, except for the dog watches, which are each of two hours duration. Life at sea was four hours on and four hours off. At five minutes before the end of each watch, one single bell, called Little One Bell, was rung to remind the relieving watch to rise and prepare to make their way to the defence station in order to grant their duty exactly on time. However, such is the accepted generosity of spirit and comradeship of the mystic that by the time Little One Bell had sounded, the permanently exhausted sailors had already risen and relieved their opposite numbers some minutes before it was actually necessary. And when in harbour, the watch ashore, on returning aboard, would find that their oppos had already slung and thus let and less the hammocks for them. I hope that this kindness and generosity of spirit is paramount in all. Indeed, I pray that we will all feel a firm responsibility for those less fortunate or more distressed than ourselves, and that within the compass of our ability we will give help and thought to those indeed. As another cautionary note, I hope also that we may have the fair and just ability to recognise calculated misuse or expectation of any ready, unquestioned kindness in these days of clever scams. Colette and I sorely missed the Sunday Paris Eucharist, 
the friendly sign of peace and the subsequent social gathering and lively crack in the common centre. Although, thinking back, I recall that as a very small boy, I dreaded Sundays. The stiff Sunday only clothes, the hushed mysterious atmosphere. The Lord's Day Observance Society was very powerful in those days. Sunday was a lockdown. All shops were closed. No football or any sport was allowed. Only churches and inns, and that's pubs, were open. The endless time kneeling, sitting, standing that we seemed to spend in church before returning home, and I had to go into my Sunday task of polishing a great ornate brass fender. I really thought that church was where God lived. I've been told that, when told, you won't go to heaven if you're a bad boy, my response was, I've been there and I didn't like it. Thank you for listening. My thought for the day, remember the golden rule, do unto others and you as you would that they should do unto you. Stay safe, take care and take no chances. Back for Biscom. Amen.